Hey everybody, how's it going? I uh, just got done putting in this 240 volt outlet here in the garage. Uh, so stick around if you want to see how to do it. If you're not sure, if you've never done something like this before, uh, watch the video. I'll show you exactly how to do it. We're going to do a little drywall work as well. And uh, at the end, it looks like, uh, looks like it was installed at the house. So stick around. Okay, so you got an electric vehicle, but you don't have a 240 volt outlet installed in your garage to use for charging. That's the situation I'm in right now, and we're gonna put one in today. Don't worry, it's not that hard. If you've never worked with electricity before or main wiring or installing an outlet, there's a couple things that we'll run through to make sure that you need to do uh, to be safe, but it's not that hard at all. Now, if you've never done drywall work or anything else like that, I'm also gonna show you how to open the wall, run the wire, and then close it all back up and make it look like a pro. So follow along uh, with this video, watch the whole thing to the end. If there's any questions that I didn't answer, put those comments down below. Okay, we're gonna go into a couple of the tools that we're gonna need and some of the parts and pieces you're gonna need to buy to put this in. So first off, you're gonna need some wire. You can get Romex or this is Serra wire. Uh, what you're gonna need for a 240 volt outlet is six three. Six is the gauge of the wire, how thick it is. And then three is the number of wires plus the ground that are all together in one. So really it's three wires plus one ground, so four total wires that are all wrapped together. The next thing you're gonna need, obviously, is the outlet. This is a NEMA 1450 outlet. Uh, you can buy these on Amazon. All the links are down below if you wanna pick it up yourself. Uh, this is what Tesla recommends uh, or says you have to have for their adapter to plug into the wall. You're going to need a circuit breaker, standard circuit breaker. This is a two gang or double gang circuit breaker, 50 amp. Look in your circuit breaker panel if you're not sure uh, exactly what kind you need. This is a Square D. It's a pretty reliable brand. And this is the type that just snaps into the bar to make it just a little bit easier for you. Uh, a box, little plastic box. It nails into the stud inside the wall and that's where you're going to mount your outlets. And then the cover plate goes over the top. You will need a cover plate, a dollar, two dollars, something like that. It's your local big box store, or you can order it off Amazon as well. Again, links down below. You're gonna need some sandpaper for when we start doing the drywall work. Uh, this is specific for drywall. You can start with just some all-purpose sandpaper uh, when you first start sanding, but you'll wanna finish off with the drywall. A straight edge T-square, something that you can draw a straight line. When we go to open up the wall, we're gonna draw a line, we're gonna cut uh, out a square of drywall and just take it off the wall, run the wire, and then put it right back in place. A multimeter. If you don't have one of these, this is not the only project that you can use it for. They're not that expensive. They're about 20 bucks, 25 bucks for a little cheap one like this. But you're gonna want something that'll be able to do uh, volts AC, and we're gonna need it to go at least 240 volts. So most of them will start at 400, 600, or they'll go higher but you'll need something to be able to check AC voltage. You're gonna need a drill and a paddle bit, or you can use a hole saw. Uh, I don't have one small enough uh, here at the house, uh, so I'm just gonna use a paddle bit. This will make our hole through the studs so we can run the wire through over to our outlet. And then a tape measure so you can measure things. All right, so here's the circuit breaker panel. We're gonna take this metal cover off and we're gonna take a look at kinda what the cutout is and the drywall around that. So I'll go do that. Uh, be careful when you're working around this with the power still on. Uh, if you accidentally touch the wires inside, that'll give you a little shock and that's no fun, I can tell you from experience. But there's no harm, you don't have to shut the power off to take this cover off. So we'll be right back after we do this. And it just pops off like that. There's all your house wiring. Again, be careful. Don't touch anything in here yet. The power's still on, the juice is still flowing. Wear, a, wear something with pockets so as you're taking screws out, you can just put them in your pocket 
And then whenever you're gonna set this off to the side, put the screws with the panel cover so you don't lose them and make sure no one kicks them or your kids, if you have them, don't steal them. I'll be right back. All right, so now that we got this open, we're gonna go put the outlet over uh, in the corner of the garage. So I park on this side of the garage and look at it, Tesla's install instructions where the best recommended location is. It's actually on the left side of this car. So I'm putting it on the right side. So I need to put it as far back as I can. Over there by the garage door, back in that corner is where I'm gonna put it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find each of the studs that are in the wall and we're gonna mark the studs. We're also gonna mark the screws that they use, the drywall screws to hang them. A good technique is to use a magnet if you have one. And I'll show you how we do that. So if you find an outlet like this one, typically it's gonna be in one of those plastic boxes nailed to the stud. So you can knock on the wall, you hear a hollow and then a more solid sound. Let's see if we can hear it. Right about there. So the stud is somewhere in this area. To find the screws, we take the magnet and the magnet will stick on the wall to where the screw is. We'll take our pencil and we'll mark that and we'll go all the way down the wall. I'm putting the outlet all the way over in the corner, so I've got a couple studs to do. Let's get to it. All right, so I got all the screws marked out and circled, uh, identified, so I know where the studs are now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take the straight edge of my pencil here and I'm gonna draw out a nice big square rectangle and uh, we're gonna end up cutting that out. I'm gonna leave you a little bit of space here between the actual box and where I'm gonna cut out because I can reach behind that and it'll help when we go to seal this back up. Uh, so let's, let's get to that. Okay, we are going to take the drill now and start taking the screws out that we've identified. That way when we cut it loose, the whole thing will just come right out. Be right back. And if you miss the screw and you punch through the drywall like I did, no big deal. We've got mud, we'll cover it up, we'll never even know. Make sure your battery is fully charged, or at least you have another one ready to go. All right, if you keep a score, these two are new. Uh, what I found uh, after I got done with all these, went to go get the knife, I realized I didn't move this way and check for screws. So I found this one, pulled it, got down here to this one. This is actually a nail. Don't know why they do that. Uh, drywall screws are like the go-to thing. Um, Maybe he only had a nail and just drove that in. So drew a box around that. We're going to cut around it. It's just easier to adjust the cut instead of trying to dig this thing out. So, okay, for real now, we're going to start cutting. So what I have here is a utility knife. This is actually a drywall utility knife. It's got just a regular razor blade on it. You can change that out, switch it around. And it's got this nice big uh, saw blade and it's, it's safety locked in there. You got to push the button to open it up. But the saw blade will lock out. This thing is great. Uh, it'll let you cut wherever there's nothing behind it. Got to be careful. Of course, if you're working around outlets like this, there's going to be electrical wire back there. But as you go through and cut, this really won't cut through the wire. So you just drive it in and start sawing, just like this. We get right on the corner and just push it in, start sawing. When you get to the stud, it'll stop. Just turn, go up, I'll score this out, and then we'll continue down on the other side.
there's a stud again. So what I'll do now, I'll hop over here in between these two studs and just repeat the process. You don't wanna watch it, so I'll pick you up in just a second once I have all that cut out. All right guys, so we're back. Uh, as you can see, I've got about halfway, I think you can see this, I've got about halfway down uh, to, the, to the end of the run and I've gone ahead and I've cut a vertical line right here in the wall. What that's gonna allow me to do is take this piece off and then take that piece off. Drywall's kind of fragile if you get really big pieces and they're really thin. Sometimes they tend to break and it's just a pain. So I went ahead and cut that. Now what we're gonna do, I've got my gaps where the studs are right here. So we're gonna go ahead and just score that line across. So let's do that now. Okay, last one. Drawwall is only about a quarter inch thick, so as you're going through, you know, the width of your blade, um, it's, it's definitely long enough to get all the way through. You may hit some resistance because you might be cutting into the wood stud. Again, that's okay. The studs are thick as well, so you're not going to hurt them. All right, so off camera, I just tried to see if I could put my fingers behind here, and it worked. So if you can get just your fingertips and just pull slightly, it might be stuck, but we will gently, gently, it looks like there's a screw there. Yep, sure enough, another nail, of course. We'll box that around it too. Okay, that should be good. Here we go, coming off. There we go. All right, there's the inside of the wall. We'll set this over here and I'll be back. I'm gonna finish this, pull that piece off the wall, and then we're gonna start cutting holes through these studs here because we've got actually one more stud over here that you can't see. Uh, it's right here, right next to the box. So we'll have to get through that, but uh, we'll do that in just a little bit. Let me open that up and I'll be back to you. Okay, my apologies. I just recorded this, putting this in here and talking about it, but the microphone wasn't on. So, all right, again, sorry for uh, not uh, having the audio on the first time, but now we'll start getting to the drilling of the holes through the studs. So let me grab the drill, set that up, and I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna start drilling and uh, putting holes through the studs here to run the wire. Uh, there's nothing special you gotta do, just drill a hole through and then we can run the wire straight through. Once we get over to the box, we're gonna have to take a look at that. There's holes in the box that we're gonna have to remove covers for and there's the stud that we have to deal with as well. But we'll get to that. Uh, what you wanna look at, look for is any hidden wires like this one. You don't wanna drill through these. Over there with that outlet uh, that we had, obviously we'll have to move those out of the way as well. Best thing to do is to drill from this side where you can see the wire. You can hold it out of the way, make your hole. And we're gonna go through each of these studs all the way across so that we can run the wire over to the outlet box. So I'm gonna move this. We'll set up a little time-lapse action and we'll get the holes drilled. All right, sorry. Had a visitor real quick and had to change batteries. Uh, if you guys were paying attention, right here, I almost started drilling through the stud that way. Would have been bad. Here's the electrical wires. Again, electricity is still on. All the power is still on. So uh, that could have been bad. But again, always double check. Don't rush through things and uh, keep an eye out for electrical wires. I'm going to re-angle the camera here and we'll time lapse through the next two studs. All right. So we got all the holes drilled through the studs. I'm gonna go ahead and get the wire out and uh, I'm gonna clean some of these up where the blowout was. That's gonna happen. This is a one inch paddle bit. Makes a one inch, uh, one inch diameter hole all the way through, which is plenty fine for the wire we're using. I'm gonna go ahead and string the wire through and get it to at least this point. And then we'll start looking at the, uh, the breaker box, opening that up and, and making a hole for the wire to come into the box. All right guys, so we're back. You can see we've got the wire run all the way down the wall uh, through all the holes. 
Uh, I didn't really talk about it as I was doing it, but as you drill these holes, you want it to be kind of in a straight line, as straight as you can be. You don't want it going up and down. It makes it harder to pull the wire through, uh, especially with the six gauge wire. So I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I can't really move it too much closer to be out of focus, but these are some thick wires. Six gauge is really thick. And the reason we went with six gauge wire, one, Tesla recommends it uh, because you're gonna be using a 50 amp circuit breaker. Uh, if you have a smaller breaker, um, basically the car won't be able to charge as fast. Uh, so thicker the wire, bigger the breaker. Uh, if you use their, their, their wall charger that they sell, the high performance one, uh, it actually requires an 80 amp breaker, which is uh, pulling a lot of juice. Uh, I didn't buy that. I'm just going to use the plug-in model. So six gauge wire is what we're going with. Whatever vehicle you have, um, if you're doing uh, something like a, a dryer or a freezer or something else like that, you're not doing this for a car, you can use something smaller, um, typically a 30 amp breaker is what you'll see for your, for your dryer outlets and, and stuff like that. Then you can use an eight gauge wire. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit thinner wire. So as the numbers get bigger, the wire gets smaller. Don't know why that is. That's just how they did it. So uh, this, again, six gauge wire. There's three strands in here plus a ground. So we've got that there. I'm gonna open this up and we'll start wiring up the outlet. All right, guys, so we're over here at the outlet now. Uh, we've got our wire run and we've got the outlet here. It's not installed yet. I just set it in there. So on the back, you can see there's, there's four, uh, four places to plug in wires, essentially. So they're labeled X, Y, G, and white, okay? G on top is gonna be your ground. That's gonna be the just bare copper wire. We'll get to it here in a second. You put that in there, we'll connect it to the ground in the box. The X and the Y, those are your two hots. Uh, the way uh, electrical breakers work and, and boxes work, um, it breaks it down into 120 volt, which is everything else in your house, your, your coffee maker, your TV, your computer, everything runs on 120. So the way a 240 volt outlet works is it takes one 120 and another 120, combines those together, gives you 240 volts. And then you've got your common wire here. So once we get this wired up, we can check between these two poles, we should have 120 volts. Check between these two poles, have 120. Check between these two poles and we'll have 240. So I'm gonna set this aside. We'll cut it, we'll cut into this. Uh, this is kind of thick sheathing and the thick wires. So a good sharp knife, something like that. We're going to trim it back to about here. Two wires are going to come in top. Two wires are going to come in bottom. We'll pull them through the box, wire it up, put this on. All right, so we've started uh, taking the sheathing off the, the wires here. Just use a knife, uh, a sharp knife. Don't cut too deep. Uh, if you do, you'll cut into the covering on the inside wires uh, and, and you don't want any breaks in that. You just want to cut the outside. Once you get through most of the outside, you can bend it back and forth and it'll break it the rest of the way around. And then just give it a little twist and it should slide right off. Sometimes it's kind of tight, but if you twist with the wire, as you can see how these wires kind of twist around, just twist with it and the sheathing comes right off. We're gonna take, we've got four wires, like I said in here, We've got the, the black, white, the red, and the ground. This one just has paper over it. Um, it's just a bare copper wire, but we'll leave that on there and just uh, plug that in so it stays protected all the way across. Over in the box, you've got your white common wire. So this will be common, and these will be your two X and Y. We'll run two in the top, like we said, two in the bottom once those are through. Then we'll go ahead and put it onto the back of the uh, back of the outlet. All right, so we got our wires pulled through the box here. Uh, they're stiff wires again, so don't be afraid to bend them around. You're not going to hurt them. Get them out. Get them oriented how you want. We're going to put our common down on the bottom, the two hots on the sides, and the ground up top. Screwdriver and your outlet. Again, ground, hot, hot, and then common. We'll just back these screws out so we can fit the wires in and then the wires slide in and we tighten the screws down. Now I need to trim these wires back, actually, so I don't put that in my pocket. I'll just go ahead and slide the ground in. Okay, 
it's on there nice and tight. I'll go ahead and trim back, trim back one wire, about a quarter of an inch, uh, not a whole lot, just enough to where the wire goes into the outlet, but the rest of the wire is still protected. You don't want any bare wire showing. Accidental, accidental contact uh, inside the box could be bad. So a pair of wire strippers, if you have them, is great for this. Otherwise, you can just kind of cut around the outside and then peel this back. Not the best way to do it, but it works. Again, none of these wires are hooked up in the box yet, so it doesn't matter if you touch them right now. And for you safety guys out there, I know you're gonna give me comments. Oh, you shouldn't be cutting towards your face and you know, definitely always use wire strippers, stuff like that. Um, I'm doing it this way so you guys can see it and I can keep it on the camera. Obviously, normally I would be cutting away from my face. You never want to bring a knife towards you, uh, just for safety purposes. So, all right, so we got our black wire will slide in here. And you want to get it, you want to get it nice and tight so that it doesn't pull out on you. Uh, as we start to put this back in there, we don't want anything loose, coming loose, anything like that. The white wire, give it a little tug, make sure it's in there tight. And then the red wire. All right, so we got those nice and tight. I'll pull those back. We'll get the plate set on. We'll screw it down and we'll move over towards the box. All right, so we're back at the box. Again, the power is still on right now. So we have to uh, keep that in mind as we're working around the box. We don't want to touch anything. Uh, but what we're looking at here, right on the inside, you can see these little circles. And uh, those are pop-out covers. So on the other side of this wall, there's a stud right here, a uh, wooden stud. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to drill through the stud, uh, get to the box, and then pop this out, um, and then we'll run the wires through into the box. We'll install the breaker. It's gonna go right down here uh, underneath this 30 amp breaker. We'll run the rest of the lines, and uh, we should be good to go. We should have juice. So we'll get to that. All right. So I've got the camera set up. We're going to start drilling. So fingers crossed. We get through. We find the uh, little cut out there a breakout hole and uh, everything works perfectly so wish me luck well that couldn't have worked out any better uh, let me move the camera around and show you what we're looking at so turn my hat back around right here is where we came out you can see this little pop out it just bent up there now it's pretty stiff in there so I'll grab some pliers we'll pull that out and then we'll see if we can open up the hole just a little bit more make it a little bit easier for us to run wires through if we find that the hole's a little bit too small, I'll go just about an inch below and we'll pop out this one as well. So let's see if that works out. Got the pliers. Again, power is on right now. So we want to be careful, but just bend it up and down. Little cover comes out. Now you can see how small that hole actually is. I'm going to come back in from this side at an angle because the wires here will make it a lot easier to come down to what we're looking for. All right, so we could probably get two wires through there. I'm gonna go in back into the wall, pop through. Uh, probably this next one up here is gonna be a little bit easier to get to, but we'll pop through that and then bend that off, widen that hole out a little bit. We'll be back in business. All right. We got two holes now. I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'll run the wires through. We're going to have to take a lot of this. I'm gonna cut it down so that it's long enough to reach everything, strip the sheathing off, and then start feeding them through the hole. Uh, should be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll see. So I've got the wire stripped off a little bit of sheathing. Wanted to show you guys a little, uh, a little trick to help with big wire bundles like this. Uh, we need basically all the way to about, about here where my thumb is. That's a, that's a good run. That's probably about 10 foot. And I don't want to twist off every little bit. So you can take your knife and find where two wires are and just run blade side up 
and you can cut right down with a twist and just follow it all the way down. It's kind of hard because I'm doing it on camera here to show you guys, but then it just peels right off uh, and you can just, just peel it right off. So I'll go ahead, I'll trim the rest of this down. I wanted to show you guys that little tip, little trick to help you if you got a long length of cable that you're gonna be uh, trying to remove the, the outer cover from. So we got the wires pulled through, did that off camera, not gonna insult your intelligence. You're putting a wire through a hole and then pulling it out. Uh, thing to remember, again, we've still got live electricity rolling through this panel right now. I have not shut off the electricity yet. So as you're pulling these wires through, you wanna make sure that nothing touches anything inside. Don't let it contact, feed it through, bend it away. You see how I've got them pulled away. Next step is going to be hooking up the circuit breaker, which is just gonna snap into place. And then over on this side, you can see all the bare copper wires. Those are your ground wires. So this copper wire is gonna route over here. We'll plug it into any one of those terminals that are open, it doesn't matter which. They're all connected together. So just pick one, find an open one. Then we've got the common wire, the white wire, which is gonna go over here and, or over here. You can see both of these bars are long common bars. When we get to the red and black wires, you can see on this 30 amp breaker here, you've got a red wire and a black wire. We'll just follow the color coordination that they have here, red on top, black on bottom. It does not matter, it's not important at all. Uh, but just to keep it pretty and looking nice, we'll, we'll make a match. So I'm gonna shut the camera off. I'll be back in just a second. We'll have the power shut off and we'll get the breaker in, wire everything up. We should have a 240 volt outlet. After that, we'll get into the drywall stuff, covering it all back up, making it look nice. But, uh, but yeah, that's how easy it is. Okay, so we're going outside now. Uh, some houses will have two breaker panels. Uh, or they'll just have one. This house actually has two. So inside in that breaker box, the main breaker is not there. So we gotta come outside and I'll turn you around here. We'll take a look. What you're looking for is where the power comes in to the house. So uh, let's get over here, see if I can show you this. Down here, there's a little latch. We'll lift up, tuck that away. Sorry, pull down, it's hard to do one-handed. And then here's your main breakers. So everything here, we're just gonna shut off. Uh, we've got solar on the house here, so we'll turn that off and then we'll turn off everything else. All right, it's all shut off. Let's go inside, let's check. And uh, this is where the multimeter is gonna come into play. I'm gonna go inside the house, make sure everything's turned off. That's a good indication but then we'll take the multimeter and we'll check it out uh, in the box before we start working. We'll be right back. So we're, we're back in the garage. As you can see, it's a little bit darker. The lights are off. We've got the sunlight, so that works out. I want to show you the multimeter here, this little guy. This is what we're going to use. I just ran inside the house. Everything's turned off, so that's a good indication that everything's turned off, power's all turned off, but we're going to use this. This actually tests the electricity and we'll be able to see if we're getting any voltage or not. So. You'll have, if I can get this here. Okay, so right now it's set to volts AC and that's with the little, uh, the wave sign there. It's called, a, well, it's a sine wave, uh, but that indicates volts AC. But you wanna look up here. You can see how it says DC. So on this multimeter, you just hit function and now it says AC right up here. So now we know we're testing the right thing and I can go touch the wires over here and we'll see, uh, we'll see if we have any voltage or not. If not, we're safe to work. All right, so we're over at the panel now. I've got it refocused for you. You got three main lines coming in here. You've got a black, a red, and a white. So just like on these, a black, red, and a white. This is, uh, this is a 120, 120, and you're common. So we're going to, again, use two of those 120s to get us 240 but we can just test from the common to the red or the common to the black, and we should know if we have power or not. So let's do that, okay? On that, I'm reading zero volts, so that's good. So we'll check the, the black and the common, also reading zero volts. 
black to the red, reading zero volts. So we know we have no power coming to this panel. We're safe to work. A pair of Lyman's pliers, you don't need these, uh, but uh, they do have a diagonal cutter right here in the middle that you can cut wires with. Uh, these little needle nose also have the cutter, so if that's all you have, you can use that as well. We're gonna start by running the ground wire over here to the ground terminal. So let me get that done. Okay, so this box, like, like uh, many other boxes, it does have, there's one ground and two ground bars, bus bars. So just to keep the wire short, I ran it to here. Now let's go ahead, this inside bar here and this inside bar here, those are both your commons. So we'll run the white wire right up into here and we'll connect that one up. Okay, so white wire's in, ran it behind all these other wires just to make it look pretty nice, neat and clean, uh, give it a nice professional look to it. Now we'll go ahead and get the circuit breaker in and then we'll attach the red and the black. Let's get it in. The way this goes in, uh, the back slides into these little plastic notches right here and then the top, these two little connectors just snap right down. Super easy installation. Okay, there we go. That was a little bit harder than it should have been. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the black and the red down. Uh, we'll get those stripped and installed and then we'll continue. All right, so again, black and red are installed. Our white uh, common is installed and our ground is installed. I'll go turn the power on. We'll come back, test the outlet, flip the breaker, test the outlet again, should be in business. Right now I've got the power back on and everything's working inside. Uh, the circuit breaker to this is off. So let's test and see, make sure that's working. Again, multimeter set to volts. AC and we'll check from our common here. Okay, about half a volt, that's nothing. Half a volt, nothing, and nothing there as well. Let me go turn the breaker on. Now this outlet should be live. So we will go from neutral or common to 122 volts, that's what we wanna see. 123 volts, what we wanna see, 246 exactly what we want to see. So this outlet is up, it's running, it's working now, it's hot. I'm gonna put the cover back on. It's just reverse insulation of how we took it off, set it up there, put the screws back in, and then I'll go ahead and set the drywall back up, and then we'll start mudding, and we'll finish this project up. All right, so I've got the drywall here. We're going to hang it back up. We're not gonna use the same holes that we used before uh, because it wouldn't grab the drywall but i do have the screws we're just going to set it in place screw it in and we should be able to see uh you know where the studs are based on the other holes so it should be super easy let's get that done all right now for the fun part this wasn't here before and we don't have a hole in our drywall for it so tape measure is going to come into play here we're just gonna measure over and we're gonna measure down and then we'll go draw it out on the, uh, on the drywall and we'll cut it out. So about five and three quarters over, six and a half down. Let me go cut that out and we'll hang this one. All right, so we got the drywall up now and got it all screwed in. Uh, full disclosure, rookie mistake. I'm not used to taking drywall out and putting an outlet in. So this time I'm trying to make it look a little bit cleaner. Um, I figured I'd do that earlier when we installed the box and uh, put the outlet in there on the stud, I put it flush to the stud, not accounting for the you know quarter inch uh, drywall that's gonna be there. So I cut the hole, once I put the drywall up, uh, basically it was recessed into the wall, which is not gonna work at all. So I had to pull it off the stud, move it forward, reinstall it, shut off the breaker before you do that if you're gonna be working around that outlet but um, that was totally fine, got that moved, and now the wall plate sits nice. So once we get the wall plate on, it'll sit there and it'll look nice. Nice clean outlet, 
we'll go through and we'll mud up all these all these cracks and all these holes and then we'll uh we'll, we'll get to finishing the project okay so mudding up the drywall we've got just some all-purpose uh you know drywall mud uh mud and trowel this is a little bit bigger you don't need it this big but uh we're just gonna get a little bit of mud stick it on there get it into all these cracks and holes cover up all these spots we're gonna scrape it off nice and clean and then let it dry come back we'll sand it later so just take a little bit on our trowel there doesn't matter where you start and just just right across So the idea is if you got a little bit of a lip, just put a little bit extra, you can sand it down nice and smooth later on once it dries. All right, we'll be back. All right, so I got done off camera, um, went ahead, got the mud finished, let it dry, uh, went ahead, did the sanding, got it nice and smooth. Uh, still wasn't exactly perfect the way I liked it. The wall still had a little bit of wave in it, so Went ahead and hit it again with another round of mud, let that dry and sanded it down. Once it was all done, took a damp cloth, wiped off all the excess dust off the wall, and then got the paint out and hit it. And looks just like the wall did before we started. The outlet, got the plate on that, looks nice and finished up. So again, any questions, comments, anything like that, put them down below and I'll get back to you. This is the first, uh, first part in a multi-part series and we'll be doing a bunch of electrical stuff around the house. So. If that interests you or if that's something that you're looking to do, subscribe to the channel, come on back and uh, learn a little bit of something about electricity and, and electrical wiring in the house. Thanks. See you next time.